Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to What Shall We Do Next. I'm Mike, your host, and I hope you guys are having the best day ever. Before I get started, guys, please subscribe if you are new here with the notification bell on. We're on the road to 158,000 subscribers, and I would love you to join me on this journey. So hit subscribe and join the fam. But what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another spooky video. <laughs> and today, guys, today... We're going to be talking about another scary story. And this scary story is called Bloodstains. So the story of Bloodstains is a scary horror story about a family who moves into an old house where a notorious bloody murder had been committed. But enough of the jibber jabber, let's jump right over to the story. Blood stains. After the murders, the house had lain empty for two whole years. The newspapers were full of sickening details about the brutal crime, and whenever prospective buyers heard what had happened behind those gray concrete walls, they stayed well away. Then one day, a young married couple named Mr. and Mrs. Griffin came to view the house. They liked the look of it, and the price was very low, so they decided to buy it. Before they moved in, they had some workmen come over and clean off the blood stains off the walls and the bathtub and the kitchen sink. They had to install new carpeting to cover the stubborn stains on the floorboards, and even after airing the house for a week, there was still an odd smell that lingered in the hall closet. The Griffins thought it was best to avoid telling their children about the grim history of their new home. There was no sense in needlessly upsetting the little ones, and it might cause them some sleepless nights. Mr. and Mrs. Griffin went around and met their new neighbors. It seemed like they were all setting in nicely. One night, as they were getting ready for bed, Mrs. Griffin was in a thoughtful mood. Did you know that one of Mrs. Bentley's hands was found in the kitchen sink? She asked. Oh, said her husband. Really? Yes, but her fingers were in the dining room. How ghastly, replied her husband. I wouldn't mind if he had used a gun, she said, but the way he carried it out, Bits here and bits there. Well, he made a mess of the whole house. It wasn't all his doing, said her husband. If Mrs. Bentley hadn't insisted on dragging herself around from room to room trying to escape. Well, she wouldn't have had to drag herself if he hadn't chopped off her legs, said his wife. I suppose you're right, dear, Mr. Griffin replied. Do you think we should invite the Talbot sisters over for dinner tomorrow? Oh, those two are a pair of old gossips, said his wife. The only reason they'll be coming is to see if we've managed to get rid of all the bloodstains. He didn't plan in advance, you see, said her husband. How was he to know that her sister would drop by unexpectedly? And of course, when the mailman came by to deliver the letters and saw what was going on, Obviously, he had to go, too. It was rather a mess, said Mrs. Griffin. I think I'll take a bath before bed. In the bath where he chopped off her legs, asked her husband. Yes, that one, she replied. The downstairs bath still looks a bit too dirty. Well, in that case, I'll just pop into the bathroom while you're getting ready, he said. Mr. Griffin was shaving himself in the bathroom when he suddenly felt very strange. Staring at himself in the mirror, he knew there was something wrong. He just didn't feel himself. And then, as he stared at his reflection, an odd sensation came over him, as if his mind were somehow clouded and he wasn't quite in control of his own actions. He quietly opened the bathroom door, walked silently, down the hallway 
and tiptoed up the stairs to the attic. When he got there, he opened the small cupboard and saw it sitting there in the corner. He had no idea how, but he knew it would be there. The axe. Mrs. Griffin was sitting in front of the bedroom mirror, putting up her hair, when she noticed her husband come into the room. His hands were behind his back, almost as if he was hiding something, and there was a curious look on his face. What are you thinking, dear? She asked. I'm thinking I won't make such a mess this time. And that is the end of that. What in the holy name of Robot Chicken? That was freaking terrifying. Holy shit. Now here's my theory. I don't think it was the guy who is like literally Mr. Griffin in the story. The guy who's married to this new wife. I don't think it was him. However, when he went into the bathroom, he was looking in the mirror. He got obviously got possessed by whatever was haunting this house. And I feel like it's the same thing that possessed the previous owner to kill his family um, and the mailman and stuff like that. I think this is some kind of demonic entity or some kind of evil spirit that's in the house that whenever anybody moves there, it's causing them to go and commit this like mass murder of like whoever is there in the house. It's causing them to take the ax and chop people up. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily this guy again because obviously it was the, the previous owner, but I think it could either, or it could just be the, the spirit of the previous owner if he was dead. Like, if he had been killed by the police or whatever, or if he just, like, killed himself, maybe. Um, however, what I'm trying to say is if he's not in prison and he definitely died, maybe it's his spirit that's pre pre possessing the new guy. And that's what's happening here. That's scary. And it could happen to any one of us. Just remember that, guys. It could happen to anybody. Anybody in your family, any one of us. Like, you could be sitting here right now watching my video, and your dad could be coming up the stairs with an axe after he's just committed murder to everyone else in your family, and you're next. Like, if I were you, I would seriously lock your bedroom door. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Don't. Well, I mean, just, you know, it's always good to be careful, but... It's probably not going to happen. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop a big fat juicy like on it. I would really appreciate that. And let me know in the comment section, what do you think this thing was? Do you think the guy was just a psycho who was inspired by the previous owner's murder? Or do you think this was actually like a demonic entity that was in the bathroom? that possessed him and then made him do it. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. But thank you all so much for watching, my lovely little cherubs. I will see you in the next video. Remember the most important thing, chase your dreams, keep on fighting, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Peace out, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoy my videos and you would like to support me and my channel more and also be featured in my videos, go check out my Patreon. Link is in the description. I would really appreciate any help you guys have to offer. As you can see, we have different tiers, different rewards. So go over there, check it out. And uh, I would really appreciate that. Every little helps. Thank you so much. And also guys, don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell on and also follow me on all my social media. I have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Snapchat. So go follow Follow me on all of those and remember the most important thing, I love you guys and chase your dreams.